I didn't see you back there, Michelle. Good to have you again, honey. Thank you, All right. Good to see the two youngins with uh, Steve and Sue this morning. Yeah. He's like getting a school bus. He keeps multiplying like that. <laughs> Jimmy was preaching about the children last night. It's every time we invested in our children, it's now. Yeah, it's now. Right. They need to know about Jesus. Uh -huh. Amen. Right. Yeah. I can't help but get excited. I tell you, June the 6th can't get here quick enough for Bible school. I'm, I'm really excited about it this year. Right. Amen. Want to invest into these children. Yeah, that's right. Tell them uh, about Jesus. Uh, yeah. They just sent me a picture of the curriculum. And I tell you, it, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's going to be good. So try, to, try your best to bring the children. We'll have a good time in the Lord for that. But yeah. We're going to have a good time this morning. Amen. These teachers will teach these children. Can't wait to hear them sing. Amen. And if you'll stand at this time, we'll invite the presence of the Lord in our midst. Father in heaven, we thank you. We praise you, Lord, for allowing us to be in your hands. God, we thank you, Lord, for all these children and the congregation today, God. Bless us once again. Something to be said or done, Lord, to impact their lives. God, I pray, Lord, that you bless us, Lord, here in the service. Bless us, Lord, here in the service. Those that would love to be here in town, we pray that you bless them. Lord, we ask, Lord, bless the teachers. Bless the brethren of the red of the song this morning. Your will be done and accomplished. God, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Uh, Lord, the king is his holy, holy, precious name. We do ask the honor and the guidance. Jesus, thank you, pray. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood.
turn in your Bible to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. I know I've made mention of this before, but I want to make mention of it again. When uh, I'll just use me for an example. I won't make nobody mad. If I get mad, I'll be mad at myself. But uh, when Daddy passed, he left an inheritance. Yeah. It wasn't a big lump sum of money or nothing like that. But uh, he always told me, he said, anything ever happens to me, he said, you and Josh can have my tools. He was proud of his tools. And uh, as he passed and left those tools with us, it's up to us, when I say us, me and my brother Josh, to accept them. Well, this morning I'm going to talk about an inheritance. And uh, I want to show you some things through the scripture. I may, may mention a couple of weeks ago, maybe two uh, Wednesday nights or something like that ago about predestination, the Calvinism doctrine. And uh, these verses that we read here is some of the verses that they grab to try to support their theory of why they teach the way they do. But we can, when I say we, I mean mankind, can take the word out of context. Amen. We've got to take the word for what it says. Amen. We don't need to add anything to it. Don't need to put our thoughts to it. Don't need to put our spin on it. Amen. The word's the word. Amen. And it's powerful enough by itself. Amen. It don't mean us. Amen. Right. Jimmy preached that to you last night. The Lord don't mean us. But we sure mean the Lord, don't we? Right. Amen. Amen. But here in Ephesians chapter 1, start at verse 1. This is the greeting that Paul gave to the church at Ephesus. He said, Paul, apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints, saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Listen to what he said. He said, Blessed be the God and Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Who hath blessed us. With all spiritual blessings. And heavenly places. All right. In Christ. Amen. Take note what he said. Who hath blessed us. With all spiritual blessings. In heavenly places. In Christ. Amen. An inheritance. That is. Uncorruptible. Amen. Amen. An inheritance that is laid up for us right. and the heavens. Yeah. Uh, you know, the inheritance here on earth. Well, let's just use mankind for an example. A father can pass away who has a large sum of money and he can leave an inheritance to his uh, uh, children and they could spend it rather quick and then they would have nothing. They would be broke. Amen. Amen. They might have a few possessions and whatnot, but they would no longer have um, the inheritance that was left to them. Right. Well, Paul was letting them know there is an inheritance that's not of this earth. Amen. It's an inheritance that's out of this world. Amen. 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 Was it back in the <coughs> 70s? Now, I'm, a, I'm in the 80s. I'm an 83 model, but... Some of y'all was a little bit older than me. But uh, wasn't, wasn't it in the 70s or maybe the 60s? I don't remember, but they they would say, that's far out. Whoa. Where are you at, older folk? Uh, huh? Y'all ever heard that saying? Man, that's far out. Yeah, well, that inheritance, it's far out of this world. Amen. Huh? Oh, exactly. it, it, it's something that nothing of this world, the gold of this world that the, 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 the earth and, and, and certain spots are rich with gold. Yeah. But all that gold compiled together cannot compare to that heavenly city. Amen. 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 I like to think of it this way. The gold that they find here on earth is the dust. Amen. Off the street. Uh, there in heaven. Amen. Huh? 
I like to think that it's that it's showered down from heaven. Amen. Uh, when you sweep the house, don't you sweep up a little bit of dust? I don't care. If they, listen, you can go sweep a room today and shut that door and go uh, again next week at the same time and nobody's been in there and sweep and you'll get a little dust. Amen. Huh? Yeah. Dust is it's, it's, it's ever present. Yeah. Amen. I don't care how clean you keep your house. It dust is going to form. Amen. I tell you, a big problem is the heat pumps. They move it around. There's a constant airflow when the heat pump kicks on. Amen. Whether it be heat or air. Amen. The air is coming out of the vents and there's a return and the, and the air is constantly moving through the house. Amen. But there's an inheritance out of this world. Listen, verse 4. He said, according as he hath chosen us in him. Before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Amen. 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 This is one of the scriptures of the Calvinism that they say that God chose who He wants to come to heaven before they were born. And if you're not one of them chosen, you don't have a chance at heaven. Well, that's garbage. Amen. Amen. Hell was not created for mankind. Amen. You hear me? Yeah. Hell, listen, God, I've said this before, He's not some mean God no, he's not. sitting up there, amen, and, 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 and drawing straws, if you will, for lack of a better term. Well, this one's going to make it and all the rest of them's doomed. Yeah. That's not so. No, not. It's not. The Bible said, and, and this is how People can warp and manipulate the scripture. Yeah. If this be the case, the Bible said that he would not have any to perish, right. but that all should come to repentance. Amen. You see what I'm saying this morning? You can't take these verses right here, amen, and say, well, God has, uh, uh, chose you before you was born to make it to heaven, and the rest of your family is going to die lost. Come on, That's garbage. Amen. Huh? Yeah. Christ, there, listen, there's enough room in heaven for everybody. Right. Do you hear me? Amen. I know I've heard people say there's only room for, for uh, just a few people in heaven. I, that's hogwash. Right. Come on. Right. I know there's going to be a new city. And John saw that city coming down out of heaven. Amen. 1,500 miles long and wide and tall. But the Bible also said he create, He's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Wherein dwelleth what? Righteousness. Righteousness. The There's going to be room. Yeah. Amen. 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 And it's going to be one big earth. The, 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 the continents will not be divided by water. We'll be able to roam through that through that new heaven and that new earth. Amen. Like Jimmy said last night, just imagine that fruit there. Oh, yeah. huh? the Lord. You won't have to worry about no worm got down in that apple and cankered it up. Right. Amen. I, I, I can't help what Jimmy was thinking uh, when he was preaching about that apple last night. I couldn't help but think about the apple tree that used to be on Papa's farm over there. Boy, you could go get you one of them apples and you think, man, that's going to be a good one. Amen. You grabbed hold of that thing and the back side was mushy uh, or it had a wormhole in it and you cut it open and there's an old wiggle worm. Huh? There won't be none of that there. Amen. Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for whosoever will let him come and drink of the water of life freely. Amen. Whosoever will. Calvinism teaches that there's only 144,000 that's going to make it to heaven. Well, hide and watch is what I tell them. Huh? There's going to be people there that you thought didn't make it. Huh? We have judged, I've said this and said this, we've judged the living and we've judged the dead. Amen. Come on. We've looked down upon them. Amen. And we, amen. That song they just sang, just sung a while ago said, Don't judge me yet. Right. There's an unfinished part. Amen. Huh? Amen. You're not done until you leave here. Amen. You're a work in progress. Huh? That old saying, you're a hot mess. 
Come on. There's an inheritance for us though. Yeah. We'll hold to that unchanging hand of God. There's an inheritance. Amen. That's, that, that, that is non-corrupted. The Bible said where, where, the, where the rust does not. It is not there. And, and the worm is not there. Amen. The moth do not eat as a canker. Amen. Come on. Now this Amen. inheritance that is laid up. Amen. An inheritance that's out of this world. That's far out. Amen. It's far out. Bless the Lord. Amen. Verse 5. And listen, right here is another verse that they tell you. And having predestinated us. Uh -huh. huh? Come on. Now this is where they get that from. Right. And they say, Paul, now he was an intelligent man of God. Well, yeah, I'll give him that. Yeah. He was. Yeah. Come on. Huh? He knew the law like nobody knew the law. Amen. Why? Like Jimmy was preaching last night. He was taught the law. From an early age. Amen. By Gamaliel or Gamaliel. However you want to say it. Huh? Yeah. He was taught from his youth. Amen. The law. If I, could, if I could say it this way. Was drilled Bless into him. Bless the Lord. Was instilled in him. And he was very knowledgeable. That's why he persecuted the church. Amen. Huh? Amen. Because it was contrary to the law. Amen. 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 But I like what Christ Jesus said. He said, I didn't come to condemn, which means pronounce unfit for use. I didn't come to condemn the law, but the law through me might be fulfilled. Amen. Huh? What did he fulfill? He fulfilled the sacrifice. He was the ultimate sacrifice. Amen. That we know what this is. There would be, have you ever heard of endangered species? Huh? Well, I'm telling you, that ox and the lambs and all these different animals that they sacrifice would be endangered species or extinct if Christ had not come on Amen. the scene. Amen. Amen. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. He was the ultimate blood sacrifice. How many knows what the Bible teaches us? He said the, the Old Testament was our schoolmaster. Yeah. Huh? It's for our learning. Like Jimmy said, the prophets of old. Now listen, I, I, want, I want to share something with you. Do you know the Holy Ghost was in the Old Testament? Yeah. Amen. Huh? Yeah. The Holy Ghost was in the Old Testament as well. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Well, you think moved on Elijah. Right. And Elisha. Right. And Daniel. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Amen. Huh? What do you think it was? What, what do you think that spirit was? All right. It was the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Church, I'm telling you, Christ has got a perfect plan for this world. Amen. His plan for this world was cankered and, and tainted was, uh, with, with, with the sin of mankind. But there's coming a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. And the Bible said, wherein dwelleth righteousness, an inheritance that's far out of this world. Right. And it's for whosoever will. Amen. Let him come and drink of the water of life free. That predestination doctrine of, of Calvinism. Yeah. If that's the case, and only 144 is going to done, make it, I believe that number's done there. Uh -huh. And all of our labor's in vain. Yeah. We might as well turn the lights off and the sound system off. We get in our cars and go to the house because yeah. we ain't got a chance. Amen. Huh? Bless the Lord. Now that's what they teach. Yeah. But if that's the case, why is Christ still moving in the services? Right. Yeah. Huh? Lord. Why is it that we still feel the anointing of God? Amen. Come on. Amen. Why is it that we still feel the presence of a living Savior? Amen. Come on. Amen. 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 If heaven's done full, why in the world is He moving on us now like He does? Anointing people. Anointing Jimmy to preach like He preaches. Amen. Uh, uh, anointing Lord. Uh, uh, God was moving in the songs last night. Amen. In the, in the songs. Sir. Why is He doing that? If, there, if that number's done been met, Come on. And some would say, well, that number's not been met yet. Right. I had a guy I used to work with. Whew. I tell you, I get tired of hearing the same thing over and over. Right. Huh? And every day, here he would come. And he would use these few little verses right here. He said, you think you're predestined? I said, I sure do. Right. I said, but not the, way you're, not the way you're leading to believe. Right. 
I said, Christ, when he formed me in my mother's womb, it was his good will and good pleasure that I make heaven my home. Amen. That was the intent of creating me was for his glory. Huh? Why else would he make man in his own image? Huh? It was his good will that he created me to make heaven my home. But it's up to me to accept it. Amen. Huh? Have you ever heard anybody testify and say, I thank God that I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior? Huh? It's up to us to accept it today. Huh? And having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself according to the good pleasure of His will. Yeah. To the praise of the glory of His grace wherein He hath made us accepted and the beloved and whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Right. What's that let me know? That when I mess up that I have a chance at redemption. I said this, maybe it was this past Wednesday night. I said this to you. Amen. We've all messed up. We've all made mistakes. We've Amen. all sinned. The Bible don't lie. The Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Aren't you glad that we have the blood applied to our life? Amen. It's up to us. Huh? The Bible said if you sin, little children, you have an advocate with the Father, the man. Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord. Huh? Who is your propitiation for your sins. Come on. He is your way maker. Hey man, the blood has to be applied to your life. Amen. Come on somebody. Huh? We, uh, this morning, we usually don't do breakfast, but I was hungry this morning. I wanted something to eat, and I said, Brooke, let's go get something to eat. Yeah. And, uh, well, I got a catch-all. You know what a catch-all is? Everything in my mouth Drops, my stomach catches it all. It's called ketchup. Well, I got me, uh, we went to Taco Bell. I like their breakfast. I got me a couple of them burritos and I opened me a packet of sauce and I had it between these two fingers and I was trying to dig into that uh, burrito and just be oh so careful. A little did I know them two fingers come together and it squeezed that whole packet of sauce all over me. huh? And I thought, Lord, that's going to leave a stain. Well, I was asking Janet before church, I said, can you see a spot on my... Sure. Asked Brooke, I said, can you see it? She said, yes, but I know where it's at. I said, Dan, you see a spot on my shirt? She said, no. She said, when you're up there, I'm not looking at your clothes, no. I'm looking at your face. I said, all right, leave it alone. But I began to think about that. The stain of sin that has been left upon our life. There's some things that when we get on our clothes, it stains and we can't get it out. Grease stains. Hey man, my, my, my catch-all, uh, I like fried cabbage. Anybody else in here like fried cabbage? Yeah. Huh? I take a big old bite of that cabbage. I can't hardly eat with a fork. I drop stuff off of it. My hand gets to shake and I don't know if, I, if it's my nerves or I'm just so excited that I'm eating or what. But my, my, my hand shakes when I'm bringing the uh, utensil to my mouth. Yeah. But uh, we had salads yesterday. And I was probably the only one in the house eating a salad with a spoon. And I don't like it little baby spoons. Uh, I don't like a teaspoon. Right. A tablespoon's all right, but my favorite spoon to eat with is a serving spoon. Yeah. Huh? They're about that big. I got a big mouth. And I can get a lot on that spoon and I can get it in my mouth. Huh? But but there's times that, that I drop things and it gets on my clothes and it leaves a stain. And sometimes the stain will come out in the wash. All right. Sometimes it won't. I said that to say this. The stain of sin, the only remedy to get that stain out of your life is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, you can take four rocks and you can rub the color out of the clothes. Amen. You can take, you can take what's that other uh, uh, OxyClean and you, you can uh, uh, put that on that shirt and you can scrub it with a steel bristle brush. And what you're probably going to get is a hole. Huh? But the only thing to bring the stain of sin out of your life is the blood of Jesus yeah. Christ. Amen. Amen. And, and, and be engrafted into the, amen. As Jesus said, he said, I am the vine and ye are the branches. Yeah. The only way we can be grafted in, I was watching a video the other day. They made a notch on a tree. 
And they was grafting a branch into that tree. And I thought, how amazing that it is. And my mind went to John chapter 15. They made a cut into that tree. And then they took another limb. And they cut it a certain way. And they put it down in that cut that they put into that tree. And they wrapped it up good and tight. It looked like, uh, uh, what's that clear stuff you use in the kitchen? Saran wrap. It looked like saran wrap, but it was wrapped good and tight. And I thought, well, that'll never work. Well, they come back, the video, it fast forwarded, and that little branch, guess what it was doing? It was a budding out, and it was a blooming. Yeah. It was grafted into that tree. Amen. Come on, somebody. And I begin to think about John chapter 15 when we've been grafted in. Amen. Jesus said, I'm the vine and you are the branches. Amen. And we've been grafted into the vine. Amen, somebody. And we've got an inheritance that's, amen, incorruptible. We've got an inheritance that Christ has left for us, the way maker. Uh, he's made a way when there seemed to be no way. Amen. Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for us that we could have a chance at repentance. Amen. Verse 8, he said, we're in. He hath abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. You know what prudence means? It means self-control. Caution. Huh? You're very wise. I'm like Jimmy. I like to, I, I watch a lot of videos. And I watched a, uh, it was out west. It was a bobcat. And it was taking on a rattlesnake. Huh? And that bobcat, well, he was, amen, he was sizing that rattlesnake up. It was a good sized rattlesnake. Yeah. Amen. But eventually, you know what happened? That bobcat overtook that rattlesnake. Yeah. And he had snake for supper or dinner or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Huh? Here they was fighting. And that bobcat, buddy, I mean, he was quick. He, I mean, that snake would strike and he would jump. I thought, wow, God, how that you made nature. Hey man, is that old bobcat? He, I, I don't know. Maybe he does know that snake was venomous and deadly. I don't know the way he was acting and jumping back from. Hey man, he he knew something was up. Yeah. Hey man, but eventually he was able to overtake that. And I thought, Lord, how how wise that you've made us. Uh, we're not wise in ourselves. It's the knowledge of Jesus Christ in us that has made us wise. Amen. Hey man, our wisdom is is it's it's vain, if you will. But the wisdom of Christ, and, and listen, that's why I say what I said earlier. It, it is time that our nation gets back to the principles that it was founded upon is the Word of God. That's why our nation is in the shape that it's in. It's because God has been left out of the equation. Amen. Amen. People have forgotten God. Bless the Lord. Amen. Verse 9, having made known unto us the mystery of His will, yes. according to His good pleasure which He hath purposed in Himself. Amen. The mystery. Yes. Huh? Bless you, more. you ever heard that? I believe it was yesterday. We was up at Teresa's. And uh, somebody mentioned cold case files. You ever heard that? That, that they couldn't, they couldn't, it was a mystery. The case they was investigating, they didn't know what had happened, so they put it in the drawer and it grown cold. They forgot about it. Yeah. Well, the mystery of God was revealed by the Son, Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 What, what sin come and made a mystery to mankind. Adam and Eve was good and they chose sin. Come on. Bless the Lord. And listen, I, I'm not trying to add to the Word of God. No, come on. But if Eve, when she would have come to Adam, if he would have been the spiritual leader right. that he should have been, yes. and this right here is not picking on the women, it's blaming the man. Amen. Because he's the head of the house. Right. Right. Jimmy, I believe if he would have said, Eve, we can't do this. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You can't eat of that. Right. You know what God told us. We can have anything in this garden but of that one tree. That one tree. You can't eat of the fruit thereof. But he did. He was blinded by sin. Just like, and I'm telling you, church, the devil, he is the most, the Bible said he's the most subtle beast of the field. He knows how to come in 
And I fought him tooth and nail this past week. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Lord God, yeah. I've been in a battle. Bless him, Lord. Amen. And I'm not trying to be pitiful or nothing like that. But Lord, he's come. And he said, you know, it ain't never going to get no better than what it is right now. I said, shut up. Bless shut him, Lord. up. Yeah. It's going to get better. I say, it may be like this. While I'm on this earth, but there's coming a day I won't hear your voice no more. Amen. I've got a chance in heaven. You don't. You was there and you wasted it. Right, right. Uh, I, I fought him this week. Lord, it's, I'm telling you, the heat's been turned up. Yes, we was on high heat. Amen. Amen. I fought him tooth and nail. But you know what? I'm an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. Amen. When he, when he tells me it ain't going to get no better, I remind him that he's doomed. All right. He's doomed. That old slew-footed thing, he's doomed. That old liar. Uh, yeah. hey, he's a liar. Yeah. I have a chance of escape Hallelujah. if I hold true to the unchanging hand of God. Yeah. He come and he deceived Eve. He said, you'll not surely die. Huh? You'll not surely die. Come on. You know what she did? She bit into the fruit. She didn't die physically, but you see, that's what the devil wanted her to think. Yeah, come on. That she would die physically. Come on. Amen. But you know what happened? She died spiritually. Amen. Come on. Amen. And she Amen. went to Adam. She, I, I can just see her now running to Adam. Adam, look, I eat of this tree and, and nothing happened to me. Huh? <laughs> now here I'll pick on the women a little bit. <laughs> I can hear, I can hear Adam. Now I'm paraphrasing. When the Lord come to talk to him, when God come to talk to him in the cool of the day, Lord, is that woman you gave me? <laughs> that, that's why we're in the shape we're in. It was that woman. <laughs> huh? You see, that's what the world's doing. Amen. The world's blaming this one, and the world's blaming that one. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Uh -huh. I'm telling you, church, we're we're living in a perverted world. Bless the Lord, yeah. yeah. Jimmy was talking about abortion last night. I don't know if it ever passed. I don't watch the news much. They was trying to pass it that a mother could give birth to her child. And she could hear that baby screaming and crying. And she had, that. and this may have passed. If it did, somebody say okay or amen or something. But she had a matter of a few minutes to decide whether she wanted to keep that baby or not. After it's done drawing breath in and out of its lungs. And if she said, no, I don't want it. That doctor would turn that baby over on its belly. And it would go into the base of its skull. Into the brain stem. And it would literally take, but like a pair of pliers. And sever that brain stem. And kill that child. And they say that's a woman's right. You know what I say it is? I say it's murder. Amen. Huh? Yeah. Our, our nation is, is so warped. Of the laws of our land is so warped a pregnant woman can get killed and they'll call it a double homicide. Uh, but just because some woman says, I don't want this child, huh? It's not murder anymore, it's her right. Come on. But the church, when it goes to stand up for what's right, oh no, 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 uh -uh, you can't do that. That's hate. That's hate crime. Church, it's so sad. Partial birth abortions. I know, I know that past. Amen. Huh? Some states honor it. Some states has put a band on it. Yeah. And I thank God for the men that will stand up. Right. Yeah. Amen. And say that's wrong. Yeah. A woman can be in labor. Amen. And right before that child is completely born, they can go in there, sniff that child's brain stem, yeah. and kill it. Huh? Throw it in the trash. Come on, somebody. Oh, they don't throw it in the trash, preacher. They put it in the biohazard box. You want to know what that's done with? That's either took to an incinerator or took out somewhere and buried. Amen. It's took to the trash. Huh? A woman, I'm telling you, I don't know if you've ever watched a video on abortion. It is so sad. They'll go inside a woman and they'll take these, they'll take these instruments and they'll grab a hold of a leg. Amen. And they'll begin to twist. And they'll literally break and tear that leg off of that child. Pull it out of that woman and throw it into a garbage can. They'll keep going and tear that child into pieces. I'm telling you, church, I wouldn't want to stand before God. Amen. With that on my conscience. I would want to stand before God. 
Amen. I'm not, I'm not trying to be gross this morning. I'm telling you, this is how warped our nation is. This is how warped the world is anymore. This is how perverse and perverted our land has become. Amen. To take, an, uh, to, to take a child and pull it apart in the mother's womb and say it's that woman's right. Church, I'm telling you, there's going to be some people anxious for that. Amen. The mother being one of it. With my body, my choice. I wish you'd make your choices before you get pregnant. Huh? How about that? Come on. It's, now listen, God, it's not His will for any to perish. I believe there'll be babies in heaven. I really do. I believe there'll be babies in heaven. Huh? Can I get an amen now? Come on. You want to know why I say that? Bible said the, the children should be able, hey man, to go and lay down with the with the lion. Yeah. Amen. Come on, that lion won't be vicious anymore. Child be well, <laughs> child be able to say, here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Uh, come on, won't be no viciousness there. Come on, all these little child, all these little children running through the streets of glory. Amen. Uh, Cause your mommy didn't mom. Oh, I made a mistake. Uh, Oh, you wasn't thinking about that when you thought you was having a good time. Oh, but if you don't get that all, if you don't get that blood applied to your life and get that off your record, you'll stand before God a murderer. Amen. You hear me? You can say it's their right all they want to. They can say it's my body, my choice all they want to. I'm telling you, church, they'll stand before God a murderer unless they repent and come under the blood of God, the blood of Jesus Christ. And I don't know why I'm on this this morning. I pray that I'm reaching somebody if it ain't in here out there on the internet. Amen. You will stand before Christ as a murderer. Well, now, preacher, the law says this and the law says that. If it goes contrary to the word of God, it's time to be a lawbreaker. Amen. Right. Huh? Yes. I'm going to go with what thus saith the word of God. Now preach on every day, even in wise. Huh? Listen. He he give us the mystery. He come and he fulfilled it. They didn't understand it. Those that, are, that was of the law, those that was persecuting the church, and Paul had papers in hand on the road to Damascus. Amen. Huh? Yeah, yeah. He had papers in hand. He, by, by, according to the law now. Right. Huh? Right. The law of the land. Yeah. Right. Listen, they were so scared, and it wasn't really them, it was the devil working through them, yeah. that Christ was going to raise from the dead. Yeah. That they put guards there. Come on, to guard his tomb. How many know the Roman soldiers, those Roman guards, could not stop the work of God? Amen. Huh? He came to make the mystery of God known. What was the mystery of God? The plan of salvation. We're born into sin. And once you become to the age of accountability, it is up to you to repent of your sin. Amen. And ask the Lord to forgive you and to come into your life. Yes. What is that age, honey? It's different ages for different people. Amen. I told you last night, I shared with them last night, testifying. A seven year old child, I was in service the night that it happened. Her daddy went up to play the piano and sing the altar song. And when he came back and sat down at his little, had his seat, I remember it like it was last night. He sat down. This little daughter was under the seat. She climbed up in her daddy's lap. Amen. And I heard him crying. The preacher was closing out the service. He said, has anybody got any words they want to say, a testimony to give before we dismiss? This little brother, he stood up. He said, I want to tell you what just happened with my seven-year-old daughter. Huh? I want to tell you what just happened. He said, while I was up there singing, she was laying under the pew. He said, I didn't know that she was paying attention. Honey, I'm telling you, the children's paying attention. Amen. Come on. Yeah. I was noticing Jenna last night. She was there. I believe she was coloring or drawing one. Hey, man, but I kept hearing her say, Amen. Yeah. Huh? Right. While Jimmy was preaching, Amen. Yeah. Come on. While she was just copying you adults. What better, what better thing to copy? Yeah. 
Right. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Huh? Right. Listen, they want to copy the things of this world. Uh -huh. Why can't they copy us? Right. Hey, Amen. We think it's okay when they're at the house playing doctor. Yeah. Huh? Now I'm going to be the doctor and you be the patient. Yeah. Huh? It's alright until the blood starts flying. <laughs> huh? Yeah. It's alright. It's all fun and games if somebody starts squalling. <laughs> huh? Oh, ain't that so cute? Oh, look at them when they're playing. Yeah. The other night, we was up there at Teresa's and, and uh, Addison. Now, they're all about the same age within within two years. But now, Addison's taller. Yeah. Within, and, uh, huh? within a year. Within a year. Mm -hmm. Addison's taller, and uh, she tries to be the boss. <laughs> That's why I call her Little Brook. <laughs> her name's Addison Brook, so I call her Little Brook. I'll get back to the seven-year-old girl in just a minute. I ain't forgot about her. But they was playing teacher the other night. And uh, wasn't it Addison being... No, it was Jenna being rough. <laughs> Y'all sit down. Be quiet. No coughing in my class. Huh? No coughing in my class. Yeah, no coughing. One of them coughs. She said, ain't no coughing in my class. <laughs> well, that's a street teacher. Yeah. I had a teacher send me. Huh? Yeah, I'm home. Yeah. Well, Okay. <laughs> Maybe we should call her Little Jess. <laughs> I had a teacher send me to, I got, I got ISS. You know what that is? In school suspension. Because yeah. I was looking out a window. <laughs> that was her role. I could tell you who it is. And most of you would know her. I was looking out a window, but she just had said, I don't want nobody looking out a window. I want their nose in their books and paying attention. And we, it was reading class. We were supposed to be writing something. I was looking out the window. I was trying to think, what am I going to write? She said, Mr. Jones, come up here a minute. She said, you're going to write 25 times. I will do what my teacher says. Yeah. I said, I ain't writing nothing. Huh? She said, all right now, it's 50. I said, I don't care if you make it 150, I ain't writing. I said, I was doing my lesson. She said, but I told you not to be looking out the window. And she did send me to Mr. Hatmaker. And I went down there and I talked to him. And he said, Mr. Jones, what seems to be the problem? I said, I ain't got a problem. I said, it's that teacher. She's the one got a problem. I said, I was doing the work that she told me to do, and she wrote me up for it. He said, well, we'll give you a day ISS to think about it. And he said, since you volunteered 150 times to write that, because it was on the note, so I had to take a note to the principal. He said, you're going to write that. And he said, if you don't write it, he said, I'm going to keep the old. And if you don't write it, he said, I'll give you OSS. Right. Buddy, I thought, you think you're something, don't you, big boy? He said, then I'll call your parents. I said, yes, sir, I'll go to ISS. <laughs> huh? Uh -huh. It's all right till you threaten to call mom and dad. Because I know what dad would have done. I would have done that right. Dad made me write Bible verses. I had to write one of the commandments a lot. I will honor thy father and mother. Huh? I had to write it multiple times. Huh? Mama woke us. Boy, she, like Jimmy said last night, hey amen. It wouldn't wait till your daddy gets home, but mommy would whoop you. She'd whoop you. Hey amen. I said all that to say this, church. Hey amen. Christ has left us an example. He has left us a way of escape. Ah, uh, well, I think they're too young, church. They're paying attention. That little seven year old girl, her daddy stood up. And she said, He said, I've got to share with you what she told me. She was laying under that pew. She was drawing her cover and she was doing something. I don't know what it is about kids wanting to lay under the pew. I did it when I was younger. Amen. And I stuck more gum under them pews up there at Puckett's Creek than most of you. It's gone now. It's gone now. Amen. But that little old girl, she climbed up in her daddy's lap. She said, Daddy, I give my heart to the Lord. I give my heart to Jesus is what she said. He said, he said, it ain't that I doubted her. I just wanted to know what she was talking about. Right. He said, honey, what do you mean? She said, daddy, while you was up there singing, said, I was just laying there, coloring my picture, or drawing whatever it was. I don't remember exactly what she was doing. She said, and there appeared a man before me and said, my name is Jesus. And I came to be your Savior. All you got to do is ask of me. And she said, Daddy, I said, Jesus, would you be my Savior? And he said, I sure will. I love you. And said, he walked away. 
You know what that daddy said? He said, I know my daughter had an experience with God. Uh, uh, oh, she, they're seven year old. They're too young. Uh -uh. They ain't too young, honey. They ain't too young. Hey, Amen. He come, Christ come to reveal the mystery. Hey, Amen. Uh, that God had laid out before us. Hey, Amen. If a seven year old child can give her heart to the Lord, honey, I'm telling you, anybody can. Amen. Come on. I, well, listen, I'm going to say something this morning. If you get mad, we'll talk about it. Amen. I don't believe in that garbage. Repeat this after me and you'll be saved. I don't believe in Lord. He said you've got to come with a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Amen. And I can show you in the scripture what you must do to be saved. But I can't tell you what to pray. And I know, I know, I get sighs over this all the time. I know people say, well, now the sinner don't know how to pray. Honey, all they got to do is say, Lord, forgive me. Huh? What did the thief on the cross say? Huh? Lord, would you remember me when he entered into your kingdom? What did Jesus look over and say? He said, I will. Huh? I will. This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Huh? Jesus didn't tell the man what to pray, now did he? Huh? Jesus didn't say, all right, now you repeat these words after me and everything will be all right. Uh -uh. Come on. Jesus told him what it took to be saved. Come on. And that man, he said, Lord, will you remember me when you enter into your kingdom? Uh -huh. He wanted to be part of what Jesus was telling him about. Amen. What did he say? He said, I will. Thank you, Lord. I will. Thank you, Lord. This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. Honey, it ain't some big three page prayer that you got to pray. Come on. A little story of a boy named Jimmy. I'm not talking about Jimmy here. He said he would go to the altar. He said it was probably one of the quickest prayers that anybody would pray. But he didn't know what to pray. But he would say, Jesus, this is Jimmy. Huh? And he'd get up from the altar. Times they'd be tears running down his face, and at times they wouldn't. Hey man, he'd go back to his seat. They said he'd do that many times. And they said one day, hey man, after church was over, they heard the screeching of the tires and the crash of the vehicle. They looked out, and little Jimmy had been hit by a car. But they all heard these words Jimmy, this is Jesus. Come be with me. Huh? Church, it ain't some big, long, boisterous prayer that we got to pray. The mystery of God has been revealed through His Son, Christ Jesus. Amen. That we can have a way of escape. There is a way of escape. Amen. That song they sing. There is a way to cross over to Canaan's fire. I'm telling you, that makes me happy right there. I have got a way to get out of this old perverted and wicked world and cross over to a new heaven and a new earth where it dwelleth righteousness and the mystery of God has been revealed unto us all. Amen. And the inheritance, it's up to us to accept it. I have so much more to this. I, I'm just going to obey the Lord. If you gotta leave, you gotta leave. That's all right. I think about the hey man, the prodigal son. He comes one day and he told his daddy, he said, Dad, give me my part. I'm done with this lifestyle, pretty much, is what he was saying. I'm done. I don't like your strict uh, strict rules. I don't like the laws and the ordinances that you got. I'm done. Give me what is mine. I'm gone. Huh? Who come back home broke and disgusted. Come on somebody. Uh, he went out. The inheritance of the part that, that was left to him from his father. His father went ahead and gave it to him. Uh, the Bible said he ra wasted it on righteous living. Come on. Amen. Whoremonger. Drunkenness. Righteous living. Amen somebody. Probably gambling. I don't know. Amen. Wasted all this substance. Wasted his inheritance. He accepted the inheritance that his father gave him. And he wasted it. Amen. He wasted it. Yes. Huh? And the Bible said he would have found had he not eaten the husk from the corn that the hogs was eating. Huh? In other words, he would have died if he hadn't have been eating them husks of that corn. 
Come on. Right. And he come to his senses. And he said, I'll go back to my father. And I'll see if he'll hire me to be one of his hired servants. Yeah. He said, because I'll be a lot better off a hired servant than I would be out here in this world. Amen. Church, I'm telling you, listen, Christ died for the ungodly. Christ died for the one, the one, listen, I, I, I tell you like this, and I know Jimmy feels the same way, I want the ones that nobody else wants. All right. Come on. All right. Huh? Yeah. Uh, now, preacher, you don't understand, we've baptized them six times already. I don't care, we're baptizing seven. Come on, somebody. Hey, man, I won't. I blessed are the merciful. We just we just taught on that here not too long ago. The Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the merciful. Why? For they shall obtain mercy. I'm going to ask a question. Do you need the mercy of God? Amen. I sure do. Yeah. I need the mercy of God. Huh? What if it was your family? What if it's your son or daughter that's been baptized six times? Yeah. yeah. But you want them to be baptized Amen. the seventh? Amen. Huh? Right. Yeah, sure. uh, that's, they're just a church hopper. They'll only be in here two or three months and they'll be gone to some other church. <coughs> Why they're here? They sold the word Amen. of God. Huh? Right. Paul said, I planted Apollos water, but now it's the one who had to give the increase. Amen. Come on, somebody. Why they're here, let's love them like Jesus did. Huh? Oh, but no, we. Oh, God. Fight made you mad. Here comes your chance. Amen. When they come through the door, we're judging them. Huh? Look at her. Why, she was that one standing out there on the street selling her body. If that's all you can think of when she comes through the door, you better get in the altar. Amen. You're worse off than she is. All right. Come on, church. Come on. Bless the Lord. That's all you can think about of all the wrong that she done. You need to get in order. Why? Because you've become a judge. Amen. You need to go and study Matthew chapter 7. It said, judge not and you be not judged. Amen. Come on. If he walks in. Amen. And, oh, that's the biggest drug dealer in Lake County. If that's all you can think of, you better run to this altar. Because you're worse off than him. Come on. Why, he's made more Mountain Dew than anybody. You know what Mountain Dew is, don't you? Huh? Yeah. They put it in a jar. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he supplied the county more times than I can remember. If that's all you can think of, you better run to this altar. Bless the Lord. You better pray God be merciful to you. Because you've passed judgment on that one. I want to see them. I want to see that dope back. I want to see that heart. Right. Come on. I don't care. Listen. Listen. I don't care if they come in here so blow it out of their mind. Hey, man, by the help of God. Uh, listen. If needs be, I'll sit down beside them. Hey, sit down. Shut up. Be quiet now. Listen to the preacher. Uh, listen to the saint. I will. There got to be order in the house of God. Amen. Hey, man, but we want to preach and teach to them. Come on, somebody. Huh? I don't care if that homosexual comes through that door. By the help of God, I want them to sit down and hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They've got a soul. I ain't got none of them. My family. You're blessed then. You're blessed. Well, church, I'm telling you, we're living in a time. I told you just the other day, I got a 10 year old nephew that come home, says he's got a girlfriend. Hey, man. And he said his girlfriend told him not only does she like boys, that she likes girls too. Huh? 10 year old now. 10 year old. Huh? Oh, if they're too young to do anything in church, no, they ain't. Come on, you hear me? Amen. I'm telling you, having hey, a 10-year-old and, and already hearing the perverseness of this world, church, they need to hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They need something that'll keep them. They need that keeping power. Come on, somebody. Hey, man. Are you tired? You ready to go home? Bless the Lord. I'm afraid the beans might burn, preacher. I've been burnt beans before. Amen. Uh, Enough salt, it'll take the birthday step. Yeah. Never more. He come and he made a way to reveal the mystery of God. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. mystery of God was revealed yeah. to Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus. Yeah. When he had the papers in hand. Yeah. Hey man, I didn't leave him hanging, I'll come back to him. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Here he was, he had the papers in hand. Yeah. All, all of a sudden, there was the bright light shone down around about. Everybody saw the light, but only Saul heard the voice. Uh, huh? Uh, yeah. Come on, somebody. 
Only Saul heard that voice. Huh? Bless the Lord. He said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Huh? I don't know who Saul knew who it was. He said, Who art thou, Lord? Huh? He knew who it was. He knew the voice. Amen. I'm telling you, when the voice of God speaks to you, you'll know it. Yeah. You'll know it. Yeah. Uh, you'll know it. Because it's so stern, but it's so gentle. Amen. Explain that, preacher. I don't know how. Huh? It's so stern, but it's so gentle. He said, it's not easy for thee to kick against the bricks. Huh? Why are you persecuting these people? The mystery of God was revealed to Saul there on the road to Damascus. Amen. And he was smitten blind. Amen. And he was took down to a street which is called Straight. Amen. And the Lord moved upon uh, Ananias. And he told him, he said, you go down. You go down. Amen. Inquire one Saul of Tarsus. Amen. On a street called Straight. And he said, you pray for him that he might receive his sight. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, Ananias was a little concerned at first. He said, uh, Saul? Saul of Tarsus? Huh? He knew. He knew this man. He knew this man that was persecuting the church. But you know what he did? He went down. Amen. And he prayed for Saul of Tarsus. Amen. And the Bible said immediately the scales upon his eye that had him blind fell off of his eyes. He received his sight. The mystery of God was made known unto Saul of Tarsus. Amen. And now his name is Paul. He made the mystery of God's been revealed, church. The way of the way of escape to this in, in to this incorruptible inheritance is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. There's so much more to this. We might come back to it next Sunday if it be the Lord's will. Amen. I don't want to bore you. Amen. I don't want nobody to let your head fall back and go to sleep and suck in a fly or something. Amen. Uh, I know the means and stuff's on, but Amen. The mystery of God's been revealed. Amen. There's an inheritance Bless the Lord. that's incorruptible. Right. That faded Amen. not away. Huh? It's not going to vanish away. The inheritance of, of this world, these earthly possessions, they'll soon vanish away. Come on. I don't care if people say, I, I know how to take care of it. You take care of it all you want to. Hey Amen. When this world is destroyed by fire, it's going to vanish away. Amen. Amen. Huh? Right. There's an inheritance. It's not going to vanish away. It's in the inheritance of salvation. Amen. Come on. Salvation. When salvation. Amen. I, I know I, people, some people say religion. That's all right. I don't have religion. I got salvation. Religion takes you to hell. Uh, I got salvation. And I've got a plan of escape to get out of this old perverted world. This old perverse world that don't know what bathroom to go to. Come on, somebody. Huh? I, I, I watched a little, well, there's a little article read. I didn't watch it. A mother and a son decided they didn't want to be a mother and son no more. Now it's a dad and a daughter. I thought, God, how messed up this world is. So sad. You know what I'm talking about. Amen. Back in here. You know what? Jesus said, He said, remember Lot's wife. Amen. Don't look back to the things that God has Lord, delivered you from and brought you from. Christ went down, amen, to Sodom and Gomorrah, amen, and give them a warning. He said, get your daughters and your wife and get out of this land. Bless the Lord. And the men of that city, they pressed upon the door. Amen. That about, about burst open. Amen. amen. And Lot, Open the door just enough to slide out. Amen. Now bear with me. I know we've got children in here. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, you adults, you see me out of church. And I'll tell you. But Lot told him, he said, I've got two daughters in here that's never known a man. Huh? You know what I'm talking about. Amen. Never known a man. Now this was Lot's plea with the men of that city. He said, I'll send these two daughters out here and you can have your way with them. Bless the Lord. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Amen. It rhymes with great. <laughs> you can do what you want to to these two daughters that's never known a man. But you know what the men of that city said? 
He said, we don't want your dollars. We want them men that's of a fair countenance. Homosexuality, honey. He said, as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Glory. Huh? Church, I'm telling you, we're living right in it. We're living right in it. Come on, somebody. Huh? It's a shame when a child can go to school one day as a boy and the next day, next day go to school as a girl. Huh? It's a shame. It's a shame. Can I give you some Old Testament right quick before I sit down? Can I tell you what Deuteronomy said? He said that the man should not wear anything that pertains to a woman. Amen. Come on. Bless the Lord. And I know it's a touchy subject. But I'll ask you this question. How much confidence would you have in me if I come in here in one of Brooks' dresses one day? <laughs> would you have any confidence in me? Now I ain't got nothing against makeup. Well, what if I come in here one day with some lipstick on? Huh? Big bright cherry red lipstick. <laughs> would you have any confidence in me? Now listen, I know I'm, I'm, on, I'm on touchy subject right here. I understand that. And I understand some women have lost their hair due to illnesses and different things. But what if my wife was to come in here with her head shaved and have on a pair of blue jeans and work boots and one of my t-shirts? Would you have any confidence in her if she come to pray for you? I can say that about her because I got to go home with her. I, I ain't scared <laughs> I've been hit in the head before. <laughs> Come on. Let's see the things that's going on in this world, George. Hey, Amen. But you know what the world's saying? It's their, it's their right. It's their choice. It's everybody's choice till it comes down to the church. Then the church don't have no choice. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you what the Bible said. The Bible said the violent take it by force. <laughs> It's time that the church stands up and gives the gives the world a little resistance. And says, listen, my Bible tells me such and such, and I'm going to go with what my Bible says. Amen. Well, now, you don't understand the law says this, and you can be incarcerated. Bless God, if, if God wants me to go to jail, there's a reason. Amen. Huh? If he does, I'll do it by the help of God. Amen. We're living in that time, church. Yeah. You wouldn't have no confidence in me coming in here one of those dresses, now would you? Would you want me to get up here and preach like that? Huh? Now bless the Lord. If I ever come in here like that, somebody get this oil and lay hands on me. <laughs> Cast that out of me. That, uh, that's what needs to happen, church. They're possessed with a foul spirit. They're vexed. But they've got a soul. Come on. Bless the Lord. I said this the other night. I believe it was on Wednesday night. I'll say this and by the help of God I'll sit down if I can. <laughs> There was a woman who came to the altar one night named Frances. Had on earrings. Had, had on a wig. Now if you wear a wig, I'm not, I'm not coming against that. Had on a dress. Come to the altar. Tears running down her face. Crying out to God. When she came up from that altar, she took her earrings off and pulled her wig off her head. Said, my name's Frank. Said the devil's lied to me for many years and told me I was a man trapped inside a woman's body. She, he said, but I felt deliverance at the altar tonight. And he said, I've got to go and get this garbage off of me. Amen. Huh? I'm telling you, the power of God can set people free. The church has crawled out and backed up for too long. It's time to stand for what's right. <laughs> you know why we don't want to stand for what's right? Because we don't want to go through nothing. We don't want no persecution to come our way. Amen. Come on, somebody. We, we don't want no, amen, we don't want no resistance. Amen. I've tried my best this morning. I love you. I hope it's been a blessing to you. There's an inheritance that's incorruptible. Amen. What did I tell you at, at, at the start? It's far out. Huh? It's far out. Amen. It's far out of this world. An inheritance that will not fade away. Amen.
And I love you this morning. Hope it's been a blessing. We, we honestly, it, it's a privilege to stand here. I'd rather hear Jimmy. Yes, Amen. I, if I ever bore you, let me know and I'll get out of the way. I'll get out of the way and let somebody else come. <coughs> I want you to know today, Amen, there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is death. Right. Then there's the straight and narrow way. God bless you. We love you.